Dollar Hey, hello, fun, and welcome back to Kurobo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Simple Survival mod, which is being made by form user Moonshot11. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is a new simple life support solution for the game. And I really have been having a lot of fun with this one, as even though it is most certainly not the first life support mod we've seen we've taken a look at a couple here on this channel it is i think one of if not the simplest that i have seen and i quite enjoy that as it adds in a little bit more realism with a little bit more difficulty without a hugely steep learning curve and i really have been enjoying my time with it so let's uh, jump on into the vehicle assembly building and have a look first at some of the new parts that are added in now i should mention right off the bat here that this is still very much in beta so still in development so any of the parts or mechanics we look at here today may possibly change but even in this first release of beta version it is a really fun little mod that i've really enjoyed and i can't wait to see how this thing does move forward but let's start by of course taking a look at the parts the first of which being the consumables ct200 tank which holds one of the two technically three new resources but we'll talk a little bit more about that later and that resource being consumables and it holds a hundred of that resource we then have the consumables ct400 which is a slightly larger tank holding 180 consumables we then have the consumables l1000 holding 400 by far the largest of the consumables tank at the moment and finally we have the radial aerothermal consumables heating apparatus oh boy why does that one have such a longer name compared to the others but this one is a radial tank and will hold 200 of the consumable resource so let's actually pop these things out we'll start with the l1000 being the largest with a radius of 2.5 meters for those size of craft we then have the ct400 and the ct200 being for the more traditional 1.25 i don't know why i said traditional but i guess early stage 1.25 meter crafts and then we have the radial oh boy that's way too long of a name the radial consumable tank which we can just pop on anywhere and boom there it is now this is my one thing that i have with the mod at the moment and that is that these are just base standard vanilla tanks that have just had a slight retexturing to them which isn't a big deal again this is in beta i just hope personally that perhaps we'll get some custom tanks down the road as this goes into further development i think that would be very neat but even if it doesn't these are wholly serviceable and do the job perfectly fine without issues and i really do like the icon there that has been added in now of course there are some texture variants for these specifically only the ct200 and 400 the l1000 and the radial one only have the one singular texture but the two cts have either a dark a black and white a white or a gray and orange texture for you to go with still maintaining on all of them the green fun little icon there which yeah i really do like that little icon it's quite cool and basically what these consumable tanks are for is well like i said to hold the new consumable resource which is what you use to then create the all-important life support resource now there are no additional tanks added in by the mod yet for that but they have been added in to all of the crude command pods where you can see say the mark one command pod holds 0.5 of a life support unit and will consume it if we go up here at one per kerbal per day which is pretty nice there though that does mean you're not going to be doing some super long missions with the mark one command pod anymore and this is one of the fun little extra features that i quite like about this mod because well yeah the mark one command pod is an early game thing you really shouldn't be doing massive deep space long-term missions with just one of these your kerbal will basically only last a half of a day with that little of life support 
worked. So for longer term missions or colonies, anything like that, you're gonna need either a better command pod like the Mark 1-3, which holds a whopping, oh boy, where'd it go, 15 life support, or you're gonna have to actually build some life support infrastructure. And here's where we talk about how we get from consumables to life support. That does require the Hitchhiker Storage Container. Now this has a new bit to it, which is a new resource converter. There we go, now that I got that to stick. Which will turn one consumable along with 30 electricity per second to create one life support. Now there is a catch here. You're gonna need an engineer in the Hitchhiker Storage Container to do it. That is very important. That is how it gets to function, which is just another little extra thing this adds in to give engineers a little bit more of an interesting use in the game. Another thing I quite like. And you know, just with the consumables from these tanks plus your electricity, however you create it, you'll be able to create all the life support you need. And the Hitchhiker storage container also does hold, oh boy, 200 life support. By far the most of any of the command pods in the game, which is pretty wonderful. So this one thing alone can mean that your colony or ship can survive for a very long time. But... How do you get more consumables? Well, of course, you could send it up on another rocket, as it is just another resource that can be easily transferred between ships, or you can create it out on your mission. Another new feature added in to existing parts is the Convertotrons can now create consumables by using ore and electric charge to produce consumables, which gives you a whole new reason to use the Drillomatic here and actually make some sort of mining infrastructure on your bases, because now you can use it not just to make fuel, but also life support. Well, specifically consumables, then the consumables become life support via the Hitchhiker Storage Container. So let's go take a look at all of this in practice and talk a little bit more about some of the other fun little features here by going up to the moon where I've got a test ship ready to go. So let's just go right to that and, you know, have a little gander at all of the, these features. Plus, we'll have a look at the third resource, the technically third resource, and the UI. Now, we talked briefly about the amount of uh, resource per Kerbal per day when we were looking at the command pods. And you could, say, do the math on that, just taking how many your Kerbals you have and, you know, dividing it by the, you know, or taking the amount of life support you have and dividing it by the number of Kerbals you have. Which, you know, works. But we also have this button right here, which will open up our life support readout. And this... This is very important, as it tells you how much life support you have left for your crew. So let's take a look at what all we got here. And first, you'll see this minimize button, and that this thing is actually kind of a small little blob of a UI box. If you click the minimize button, boom, it extends out, making it a bit bigger and more useful. We also have the plus and minus keys here, and that will either extend or shrink the uh, main uh, box here so you can, you know, not have to scroll quite as much if you've got a really large ship with a lot of crew. Now, information-wise, a very important thing is up here in the corner showing you that currently the ship is active and that we have 400 days worth of consumables on board that can be converted into life support. Very good. And then down here, we actually have the breakdown of life support. So we have the uh, command pod here and also the hitchhiker storage container. You'll get a different grouping for every command pod and hitchhiker storage container. And then inside of that, the Kerbals within it and how long their life support will last. Now, here's the thing on that, of course. It's showing you how much just for those guys inside that one thing. So in the Mark 1-3, it's showing us that with the 15 life support we have, we've got just over seven days of life support for Bob and Jebediah. And down with Bill in the Hitchhiker storage container, 
Well, he's he's got 200 life support, so he's got 200 days worth of living to do, which is pretty cool. And that is a very easy way to visualize it all so you can remember, okay, I have that much, and oh no, we're running low, but I see that I have 400 days worth of consumables, so I can, you know, right-click on the Hitchhiker Storage Container and start to convert the consumables into life support so that, you know, you're good and fine there. And let's actually uh, just sort of pop on the life support for these things, just so you can see. And as you can see here, like I mentioned earlier, we can transfer the life support between the different containers. And of course, if you do dock to a space station or a rover to your base, you can use the transfer mechanic there, which I absolutely love because you could take, say, a small rover with its own life support that it relies on a larger base to support it with, which is pretty cool. Same things for any orbital missions, you know, docking with a larger space station that has the ability to produce life support, and you're just topping up your little shuttle, what have you. Now, of course, for any base, you'll want maybe a uh, mining infrastructure with some ore tanks, which then, once again, we can use the Convertotron to turn it into consumables, that ore into consumables there, a very useful thing. And then with, again with the Hitchhiker Storage Container to turn the consumables into the life supports. Let's actually just sort of um, rip some of those resources away and let's uh, rip some of the life support out. Now you can see now that I have taken away a little a bit like 40% or so, all of the numbers have adjusted for how much our crew has left. And if I turn on the Convertitron, or rather the Hitchhiker Storage Container Converter here, you can see it's now dropping the amount of consumables we have up here and raising the amount, or the time rather, of life support here. And we'll just keep on filling this ship up entirely. Equally, if we do turn on the uh, Convertitron, we can start producing more consumables from the ore that we have. Now, of course, you may have also noticed we've got another column here called Suit Life Support. And this is another mechanic I really, really love in this because not only do you have the life support for your ship slash base slash space station, but if we take, say, Bob here on EVA, well, look at that. He also has a new EVA life support resource. That is that third resource that you do have. And this one will be consumed at one per minute. So with a full tank of 60, that gives Bob here an hour of life support in his suit to do whatever he needs to do, whether it be on the surface of the moon, up in orbit, what have you. And you'll notice we have the fill EVA button here because if I board back into the ship, the EVA life support does not automatically refill. You can see here that it's now at 59 minutes and 25 seconds compared to Jebediah's full one hour. But we can simply fix that by hitting fill EVA and boom, his EVA life support has now been refilled and he can go back out into the world. And this life support for the suit is very important because of course, well, your life support keeps your Kerbals alive. If you run out, they die. Just as if they were in a horrible crash, they will be, you know, scrubbed from existence and out of the roster. But what's a very interesting mechanic here is we have the two life supports. So if the Mark 1-3 command pod runs out of life support for whatever reason, actually let's just go ahead and do that now. So go into the tools and let's just take all the life support out of the entire ship. Well now, they, oh, that was the liquid fuel wrong thing, haha. -ha. Now notice that they're now running off of their suit life support and we're getting a warning. Basically your Kerbals have gone into survival mode and are using their suits to continue to live and you have an hour to either rescue them with another ship or of course turn on your converters in the Hitchhiker storage container to produce more. And I love that. So you've got the main life support that they'll use first. If that runs out, they've got the suit life support and if that runs out, well, they're dead at that point, and it's game over for your Kerbals. Just another fun, neat little mechanic that I really do very much enjoy. 
And that also does bring us to the last feature here, this allow unsafe crew transfer. Basically, if you are moving crew between ships or pods or whatever, if the pod in question, like the Mark 1-3 command pod here, was out of life support, you don't really want your crew to go in there because they're basically going in there to suffocate. So basically, if there's less than, I think, 30 seconds is what the mod page says, it won't let you transfer your crew, transfer your crew. But you can override that, like say if your Kerbal has more than enough suit life support, you can pop them in there so that they can then say if you have to get an engineer into the hitchhiker storage container to turn on the converter and get the whole ship back into working order. So it's just a fun, neat little thing with a nice little safety mechanism. And that's really all there is to talk about with this mod. Even still in its early beta here, it has a lot of great features and it's just a fun little life support system that's easy to use. So if you'd like to check it out for yourself, which I'd certainly recommend you go and do, you can have a look at the link in the description as per usual, my friends. But that is going to be it for this episode today. Hopefully you all have enjoyed, and you do come back for the next one. Hopefully we'll be looking at another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one.